Approximately 180 people were arrested at a tar sands protest as they climbed over a barrier that had been set up by the police. This is Malik Beruznami for the Real News Network. In Ottawa, Ontario on September 26, individuals and members from organizations including Greenpeace, Tar Sand Action and the Indigenous Environmental Network gathered in front of Parliament Hill to, to risk arrest in an act of civil disobedience to show Prime Minister Harper their opposition to the proposed 1,700-mile Keystone XL pipeline that is to carry tar sand oil from Canada to the Gulf of Mexico. Activists in both D.C. and Ottawa have been voicing their concerns to their respective governments to stop the project. Canada wants to become the number one world producer of oil. At our expense, in May, we were in Washington, D.C. In August, we were in Washington, D.C. We are letting the Americans know that we do not support the Keystone XL pipeline. It is simply wrong to continue managing Canada's economy without a national energy policy. There is no sense to this approach. Our Prime Minister says we need to be the fuel tank of America. How the hell do you de-link jobs, the environment, the economy, First Nations rights? You can't. It's all one package and you can't put it in a pipe and ship it to Texas. The time is now to put people before profit. This behind me is the House of Commons, not the House of Corporations. The, gov the government should represent and protect the people. Instead, of, instead what we see is communities being sacrificed for the profit of few. Individuals gathered at a rally where speakers like Maud Barlow, Chief Jackie Thomas, and Tony Clark voiced their concerns over the tar sand industry. It is very clear that it is ener the energy industry, the energy companies that are driving policy in this country and not the other way around. Maybe Canada's government is interested in bending or watering down their own laws for oil companies and for money. Our government doesn't work like that. We say no to their promises and their pipelines. We say no to the tar sands. We say no to the destruction of our land, water, and people. It's unacceptable to allow the tar sands industry to go unchecked, spewing greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere at increasingly alarming rates to the point where it is now Canada's fastest growing global warming machine. Dead wrong! Inacceptable! One of the main objections to the expansion of the tar sands is the fact that the development of tar sand oil is a labor and capital intensive process. Unlike regular oil, tar sand oil is solid and carbon-based. To refine the oil, the carbon must either be removed or have hydrogen added to it. This process has taken a toll on the environment and nearby communities. To make one barrel of oil, it takes four to five barrels of water. There are tailings ponds that total 700 square miles of toxic waste. That waste goes into the water system. We are downstream. We feel it. Where I come from, billions of dollars have been taken out of our traditional territory, and yet till this day, my family goes without no running water. We see abject poverty in the richest province in the country. First Nation communities living in third world conditions in a first world country. We see Aboriginal treaty rights being violated daily. Individuals like Ben Paulus of the Indigenous Environmental Network and Melina Labucan Massimo from Greenpeace are in disagreement with the Harper government's management of resources. The main reason that you know Canada is backing the tar sands so much is that they see it as, as you know the real economic driver. But it's an interesting thing because under under the, this neoliberal model that the Harper government is implementing, you know Canada doesn't even gain uh, that much from the exploitation of the tar sands. The Harper government is subsidizing oil companies, the most profitable companies on the planet, to a tune of about 1.4 billion dollars a year. At the same time that they're cutting spending to a lot of social programs, a lot of programs for Aboriginal people, a lot of pro uh, uh, programs that are designed to counter poverty and women's issues, um, you know, it, it's really inexplicable. The infrastructure is already in place for these corporations and, you know, this type of fossil fuel development. And because this infrastructure in place is, they're trying to keep it in place, you know, basically, um, instead of decentralizing, you know, 
power, which would be renewable energy systems or systems that would actually empower communities to, you know, power themselves, you know, have solar hot water. We'd have a lot of different, um, you know, energy initiatives that would actually benefit communities and actually keep communities healthier and more sustainable. Um, but because we're what the Harper government's trying to do right now is basically lock us into a fossil fuel based economy. George Poitras attended today because people's health in his community and surrounding areas is being put at risk with the development of the tar sands. About a year and a half ago, I attended the Alberta Cancer Hospital where our youngest victim, 27 years old, was diagnosed one month and two months later he was dead. This government in 2006 when our local physician, Dr. John O'Connor, many of you know him, actually lodged complaints against him, essentially laying charges against him for causing undue alarm because he was raising issues about observing these unusual cancers in my community. Essentially saying to the community of Fort Chippewan, they don't care what Dr. O'Connor is claiming. They don't care that our people are potentially living in a situation with an epidemic of cancers. The arrested individuals were charged with trespassing and released a few hours later. In my opinion, those crossing the line today are not breaking the law. The people breaking the law is the Harper government and that building behind us. They're breaking the Fisheries Act, which says you cannot put poison into our lakes and rivers and groundwater, and they allow it to be rapidly put into the groundwater in Alberta. Now they're going to export it around the world. They are violating the UN, the new recognition of the United Nations to the human right to safe water. They are violating that. And they are, are violating the, the right to free, prior and informed consent of First Nations people as is understood in the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Shame on them. Now you guys get that tar sands cleaned up or we're coming back. All right. From September 26th to September 30th, the U.S. State Department will be holding comment hearings in those states who would be affected by the pipeline. A final hearing is to take place October 7th in Washington, D.C. at the Ronald Reagan Building.